Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Nerd Nerd Show. <laughs> My name is Nick. <laughs> I'm Rich. <laughs> and today we're talking about what we've been up to. Yeah. Um, you want to go first? Sure, I can go first. I've been up to, well, I've been up to a lot recently. Yeah. Um, the big thing that I've been up to, we're actually not going to have posted until tomorrow mm. for a discussion. So, just hint, I attended the Florida Film Festival this past week. Um, Ten days of movies, so I'm not going to go run all those down here. Those that'll be our discussion. Is we're going to talk about that, um, so you can find all that information there. But I have been up to one other thing. Um, the new Ratchet and Clank game came out. Oh yes, I've been playing some of that. Mm. It's really good. I'm excited to play it. It's a lot of fun. It looks incredible. I know a lot of places have been saying that it looks like a Pixar movie. I can confirm that yes, it does. Like it, this might be one of the best games, if not the best looking game, on the PlayStation Four right now. That's really cool. Um, and I was really happy, you know, because I was I was listening to some reviews of this, and they were you know saying the stuff like like that that it looks like Pixar come to life finally delivers mm -hmm. on the promise of when people said what will what if games get to that point, yeah. etc. And all I kept thinking was, yeah, but the movie looks like shit. I was like, so are you saying that because you think the movie looks like Pixar? Because the movie doesn't look like Pixar. Yeah. Animation. I'm talking about animation. Yeah. You know, forget about the content of the movie. And then they made the comment of, and we also saw the movie, and the game looks way better than the movie does. Yeah. And I was like, all right, good. From, and that makes no sense and good. From the trailers, yes. The, the movie does not look as good as the game. Um, but this makes me more interested in the game. Or in the movie, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a feeling that the movie's no good. I don't know if you've been listening, you know, all right, so a lot of the IGN podcasts have, like, mm -hmm. they've talked about how they've seen the movie, but how they can't talk about it till the end of the month. But the way that they talk about it some of the times, yeah, you I can tell. Heard that. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they've said it, uh, they've said it a bunch of times. Okay. On, on the, oh, I think they had a little conversation on Unlocked. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't listen to. But they were talking a lot about it, it was like, whatever, we don't need to talk too much about it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but they, they've all been, and they said it on Beyond, too, how they had all seen the movie. It sounds like everybody at I didn't got to go or something. Mm -hmm. And how they weren't allowed to talk about it. But then they made some other comment on one of them where you could tell that they mm -hmm. wanted to say that it is no good, but they didn't say it. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, I mean... I, but anyway, the game. The game is a lot of fun. The the It's funny. I mean, it's it's very clever. I like the way it's set up. I'm not super far into it. Um, I've played it a couple hours, not a whole lot, but I like the way sort of the tutorial set up is the whole thing. I never actually played the originals. No, neither have I. Um, and so the whole thing is set up of spoilers if you don't want to know anything about it. Um, Captain Quark, I believe his name is, um, like telling these prisoners like his tale and the story of of Ratchet and Clank. And so like the tutorial stuff is set up. Like he's telling the story, and it's like, as you're, you're, you try to walk into this area that you can't, and it's like, Ratchet tried to go up this area, but unfortunately, you know, or something that he didn't realize that he didn't have the magnetic boots that he needed to make his way up there. He found out that he could jump higher by hitting, by double jump, like, like, not quite like that, but like yeah. very similar. I thought that was kind of clever and funny, um, interesting way to do it. Um, it was the story, it's, it's very cute. Um, I'm glad that it's getting a lot of great reactions. I'm glad Insomniacs got another hit on their hands. I think it is a hit, yeah. too. I think it's selling very well. Mm -hmm. I think it's selling a lot better than I thought. Like, I think on Amazon today, like, you could only buy it from like, a Amazon third party. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. It's not on Amazon right now. Um, which is really cool. And for some reason, the game is uh, beautiful. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be great. For some reason, it's only 40 bucks. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, I'm okay. I don't have a problem with that. But I mean, they could easily be making a lot more money on this by yeah. charging sixty bucks because it is worth more than some games I've paid sixty dollars for in this generation. It's really cool. Um, I'm excited to get it and play it. I don't know when that will be. Sure. Because I again, I have I have, I have games right now that I have not played, yeah. so I'm not in a rush to get it. And then I'm thinking it's already forty. I mean. Wait until I get the price cut. It's gonna be yeah. this amazing new game for like twenty five bucks. I would like to support it now. Sure. I just don't have a reason to. No, of course. Um, it was. It's a game that I kind of feel like I need right now. 
um, you know, I'm looking at like Fallout to finish or Witcher to get back to and all these kind of bigger games. And this is, it's, it's a very meaty game, but it's a very linear game. Yeah. And there's room to like, oh, go find this little side area or there's a little bit of exploration, but not overwhelming or not too much. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of what I need right now. Something like a palette cleanser before Uncharted, which isn't an open world game, but it's a bigger, more serious game, kind of. Um, and then Doom are kind of the next two big games that I've got coming up. So this is kind of a good game, I think, right now, and what I've needed. Mm. Very cool, very cool. Uh, I will report back whenever it is that I do get yeah. to it. As soon as I get through more of it, I'll definitely give it an update. But right now, it's it's a lot of fun. If you're looking for something to play or have been debating and picking it up, definitely pick it up. It's worth it. Very cool. Alright, so uh, this week I have been up to a couple of things. Um, one of the free PlayStation games from last month or the month before was The Walking Dead Season 2. Okay. Uh, so. I already played it in its entirety on my iPad when it came out, but I really liked it. I'm a fan of that series uh, of games. Have you played either of them? Mm -hmm. I have them both season two. from PlayStation Plus months, and I haven't touched either of them. Um, and I was just kind of like, you know what, this is an easy thing to go through. Uh, I'm just going to spend a couple mm -hmm. days going through it. Still really good. I've been cool. making different choices than I made when I played through it the first okay. time, just to see what the changes were. Pretty minimal. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a well told story and uh, nice easy way to get trophies. Yeah, you don't have to do anything for them to come in. Have you done any of the Michonne Not stuff yet? yet? Okay. Yeah. Um, the reviews have only been so so on yeah. that. That seems like another thing like. Uh, obviously that's going to be a free game one of these months. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like all the Telltale games end up being that way. So my motivation for getting them is less and less. But yeah. I will get Batman. The Batman game day of, like, as soon as that comes it's out. It's kind of in the Batman if you can't yeah, tell. That's probably going to be, like, this summer or something, right? October. Sometime this year. I, I feel like it's this year. Uh, so I've been playing that. And then the other thing... Um, in preparation for Civil War, okay. I have decided to rewatch Phase Two. Oh, okay. And so, I rewatched Iron Man Three yesterday, which I had not seen since the theater. Okay. I've seen it one time. I hated it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, "All right, that's the first one in Phase Two. I'm gonna give it another shot." I still don't think it's that great. It really isn't. It's. it's I don't think it's a very good movie. I think that it is the the maybe the best Downey Jr. performance, the most complete. He's really funny, but there's a lot more to his character in that mm -hmm. one. He goes through more of an arc, I think, in my opinion, than in any of the other films. Uh, but for me, there's not much else there. But I had a really, as I was watching it, a really interesting thought okay. about myself. Uh, maybe you'll think it's interesting. That it's, it's kind of a shame that Marvel was not able to get the rights to Spider-Man before this movie. Because we know that there is apparently, the rumor with Civil War is that Tony Stark plays a role in recruiting mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Yeah. And it would have been so much cooler, in my opinion, if in Iron Man 3, instead of just that little kid who will never mean mm -hmm. anything again, if that kid had been Peter Parker. And that he was gone from New York. Yeah. With Aunt May and or Uncle Ben, because they had they left New York following the attack on New York by the Chitauri. He lands there, helps Iron Man because he's a science wizard, helps him rebuild his armor, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the movie, instead of just standing in the lab, he buys them, a ha Aunt May and him, a house in New York and tells them, you'll always be safe in New York under my watch. And that inspires young Peter Parker to become a hero and use the lab that he gives him. And then that's why he goes to Tony Stark. Like, that would have been that so could be, much that could cooler. Have been interesting. That would have been so much more awesome. And it would have tied... Uh, the Civil War reviews have come out, and I, I've I've read a couple that said they were spoiler-free. Mm. People seem to love Spider-Man. Yeah. I'll tell you that. But even the really, really, like, Spider-Man is the best part of this movie, but his entry into it seems kind of forced. Okay. And if he had tied into it in that way, it's just a shame that it didn't work. Sure. That I mean, that I, I really cool. I'm not shocked that it would feel forced because it was kind of a last minute 
requirement. Pretty much, yeah, they were about to shoot. Um, and they were like, well, we got to put him in. I'm very interested to see how, he, like, I can't imagine an organic way in which he pops into the movie, yeah. even if he's awesome. I'm very interested to see how it plays out. I have no idea. We'll but, definitely report back. We'll have a, a review up for that as soon as we see it. Very like excited. Should do. But, um, but yeah, watching Iron Man 3, again, it's it's whatever. I'd like to see it again. I really liked it in the theater. I think it's might be my favorite Iron Man movie. I'm glad you didn't hate it as much as you did the first time. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it could be my favorite Iron Man movie, too. I just don't really like them. Oh. Uh, you don't like the first one? I like the first half of the first one. I think it really goes off the rails. Okay. Jeff Bridges' motivations don't make much yeah. sense, and it's a lazy last act. And um, Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to watch Hall Phase 2. But that was probably the only one that I'll talk about rewatching because okay. I've seen all the other ones multiple times. So, that's what I've been up to. Yeah. That's what you've been up to. That's what I've been up to. Except for the film festival. Stay yeah. tuned tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow we'll talk about the film festival. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's what we've been up to. Yeah, not a lot. I mean, we've it's been a little while since we recorded. I'm kind of surprised we don't have more to talk about. I know you would think, but not really. Cool. Well, you can find both of us on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Rich Belson. I'm at Stonks. The channel's on Twitter at OABeer underscore official, and you can email us at overbeerofficial at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash overbeer. Um... We're on YouTube as well. We don't have a URL yet. Yada, yada, yada. Subscribers, all that stuff. So if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. That will wrap things up then for today. Oh, we have Instagram now too, over underscore A underscore beer. Um, do some fun things on there. Movies Nobody's Watching Monday, Forgotten Movies Fridays, um, posts about the beers we're drinking, things like that. So you can follow us there too. But yeah, so that will definitely wrap things up for today. So until next time, drink up.